Let us continue on the next question, question number 31. With the following highly basic hydroxide, all the long-term hydroxides are given. While discussing about the long-term contraction, long-term contraction effect, I said from left to right that ionic and atomic sizes are decreasing, then for long-term heights, from left to right, the basicities of oxides and hydroxides gradually decreasing at the ionic size decreasing the basicities of oxides and hydroxides gradually decreasing. Now, you see the answer options, option A is actually lanthanum hydroxide is given, lanthanum is actually very big, lanthanum hydroxide is given LaOH taken thrice. Second option prosodymium PrOH taken thrice. Next neodymium and OH taken thrice. Thus one lutetium, lutetium hydroxide. Among these particular lanthanum is very big in size. Yes, lanthanum is big in size. Therefore, lanthanum to OH bond length is very high. Come to the lutetium, lutetium is smaller in size. Lutetium to OH bond length is high. Then whichever is having greater the bond length, the bond energy is less, easily dissociates, easily ionizes. This is what coming to be plus and minus. So, among these particular hydroxides, this particular lanthanum hydroxide, lanthanum is very big in size, lanthanum to hydroxide, bond length is very high. Therefore, easily ionizable is what lanthanum hydroxide producing more number of OH minus ions. Therefore, answer A is the correct here for 31. A answer is what uh, A for this particular question. Question number 32, which of the following produce heavily hydrated ion. So, from according to lanthanum contraction effect, lanthanum to the ionic size is decreasing. Among the given, this particular options, first option is given as lanthanum plus 3, second option cerium, third option prosodymium, fourth option lutetium, lutetium plus 3. Among the three, you can understand lutetium plus is what very small in size, lander without big in size. Because the ionic size, the charge density, charge density is very thin, charge density is very thin. So, hardly it can accommodate only one layer of water molecules, hardly six or eight water molecules can be accommodated by this particular lanthanum plus three. Come to the last option, the fourth option you see lutetium. Lutetium is what very small in size, then it is having greater charge density plus 3 charge density is very high for this particular. You know well any ion which is having smaller size, greater charge density, it can accommodate more number of water molecules through strong electrostatic force. Look here lutetium plus 3 can accommodate not only one layer of water molecule, first layer, second layer, third layer of water molecules it can accommodate. So, three layers of water molecules it is accommodating more number of water molecules can be accommodated by lutetium plus 3. Therefore, lutetium plus is what heavily hydrated. So, this particular 32, question number 32, that answer is what D. Question number 33, the number of unpaired electrons in ytterbium plus 2, europium plus 2 is. See option A, it is given as what 27. Option B 70, option C 74, option D it is none. Iterbium plus 2, Iterbium plus 2 electronic configuration is what F14, F14, D0 and S0, D0 and S0 is the electronic configuration Iterbium plus 2. Let us come into next one. Iterbium plus 2, then europium plus 2. Europium plus 2 is what? It is F7, D0 and S0, D0, S0. Now, we consider in the case of Iterbium plus 2, here there is no unpaired electron and in the case of the here, seven unpaired electron, the answer should be what it is it is 0 and 7 should be there, 0, 7, but uh, options are not given 0, 7, 7, 0 is given. Therefore, here answer D answer D the correct one, answer D for this particular 
33 question number. Coming to question number 34. Separation of long threads and ion exchange method is based on C option A is given as size of unhydrated ions. Option B is given as basicity of hydroxides. Option C is given as size of hydrated ions. Option D is given as solubility of their nitrates. Solubility of their nitrates. So among this particular option B you see basic B is basicity of hydroxides, no way related to separation of lanthanides. And the size of unhydrated ion, no way related to this particular ion exchange method is based on only sizes of hydrated ions. A bigger hydrated ion, bigger hydrated ion, consider lutetium, lutetium plus three ion, which is heavily hydrated. A bigger hydrated ion is not actually sticking to the ion exchange, ion exchange resin, ion ion exchanger. Therefore, whichever the bigger in size. Lutetium plus 3 heavily hydrated. This is what uh, first eluted, which is which cannot uh, fix into the interatomic spaces, intermolecular spaces in the resin. Therefore, whichever the bigger hydrated ion that is eluted first. So, according to this particular separation of lanthanide ion based on what factor? The separation of lanthanide ions by ion exchange method is based on height sizes of hydrated ions. A bigger hydrated ion is eluted first followed by smaller, smaller and smallest. Therefore, on option C the correct, correct answer here. So, answer is what the C. Question number 35. Which pair of compounds is expected to show similar color in aqueous medium? Aqueous medium. Option E is given as what? FeCl3 and ZnCl2. Option B is a VOCl2 and Cupric chloride. Option C is VOCl2 and ZnCl2. Option D is ZnCl2, MnCl2. Whenever a color of a particular pair of compounds is given, check it which pair is having same number of 100 electrons. Generally, same number of 100 electrons are there. That particular pair can be expected to exhibit same color. Coming to the option B here, VOCl2. VOCl2, vanadium oxidation number coming to be vanadium oxidation number coming to be plus 4 and uh, CuCl2, CuCl2, CuCl2 means what copper again plus 2. This particular vanadium plus 4 means only D1 electronic configuration, 100 electron is there. Coming to copper plus 2 means you know D9, D9, this is carrying 100 electron, this is also carrying 100 electron. Therefore, this pair can exhibit more or less identical color. Therefore, question number 35, the answer is B. Coming to question number 36, Restitified solution of potassium dichromate when treated with a, a solution of iodine peroxide forms a blue solution that is subsequently turns into green on standing. The oxygen states of chromium in the blue and uh, the green solutions are respectively. The very important question repeatedly frequently this particular question is coming. Potassium dichromate on reaction with the iodine peroxide producing a compound first that is blue in color. Then again this you are standing, you are actually keeping the solution like that only. This particular blue color solution decomposes, decomposes and again converts into what a green color solution, green color solution. What is the reaction actually taking place in this? Option A is given as what are the oxidation states of this? I will show the equation and I will explain to you. Option A is what plus 6 and plus 6. Option B is what plus 3 and plus 3. Option C is plus 3 and plus 6. Option D is plus 6 and uh, plus 3. These are the options given. First, let us check what is the reaction between potassium dichromate and hydrogen peroxide. Then what is happening the subsequently to this particular product to produce? See. K2CR2O7 plus 3 acidified H2SO4 and uh, hydrogen peroxide this is the reaction. This particular reaction is carried out in ether solution, ether solvent, ether solvent. See the products what you are getting here, this will be giving rise to 
2 CrO5 chromium peroxide you are getting chromium peroxide plus chromium peroxide and you are getting K2SO4 K2SO4 and check it how many water molecules 5H2O 5H2O this is the reaction this particular chromium peroxide this is actually blue in color blue this is seen in only ether solvent ether solvent only we are looking this particular seen in ether solvent blue color this is what chromium peroxide read the name also chromium peroxide chromium peroxide blue in color chromium peroxide seen in this particular ether solvent the oxidation number of chromium peroxide is plus 6 so first compound oxidation number plus 6 this subsequently this whenever you are actually allowing to stand for few minutes it is most uh, unstable compound why unstable compound it is a peroxy compound see this particular compound butterfly structure you might be knowing this the structure of this particular compound is butterfly structure we call this is the structure of the compound the chromium in this is what plus 6 it is a diperoxy compound it is a peroxy compound unstable if you are allowing to stand for few minutes slowly it decompose in this presence of again same acid how it is decomposing see this is what uh, cr o5 cro5 plus again sulfuric acid in presence of sulfuric acid it is what 6 uh, you take 2 cro5 and 6 h2so4 then the ultimately you are getting a compound cr2 so4 taken thrice this 3 cr cr2 so4 taken thrice this you take uh, four times to balance it four cro5 six h2so4 two cr2 so4 taken thrice plus plus you are getting six h2o plus seven o2 you are getting this particular compound is chromic sulfate this is green in color this is green in color see first check compound you are getting blue on standing since it is less stable compound it is converting into another compound is chromic sulfate blue colored solution after some time turns to green color but the oxidation number of this plus 6 but the oxidation number of this chromic sulfate cr 2 taken the rise the oxidation number of this is what uh, plus 3 so answer d for this particular question number 36 answer d this is what uh, d the answer for this particular question the very important and remember this particular balanced equations how you are getting this particular chromium peroxide and again chromic sulfate this is blue in color this is green in color right coming to question number 37 arrange the cerium plus 3 lanthanum plus 3 promethium plus 3 and ytterbium plus 3 increasing order of the ionic radii what are given as c cerium plus 3 lanthanum plus 3 promethium plus 3 and uh, ytterbium plus 3 these are the ions given and we have to arrange these particular according to their increasing order of ionic radii given you know according to lanthanide contraction the lanthanides left to right the ionic size is decreasing ionic size is decreasing now you see whichever actually right hand side they are having got smaller ionic size left hand side they are having got a bigger atomic size therefore which is actually right hand side let us consider it rbm plus 3 smaller in size then followed by promethium plus 3 followed by cerium plus 3 you take followed by this particular lanthanum plus 3 this should be the answer coming to options which is the correct option you see ytterbium plus 3 promethium plus 3 cerium plus 3 and lanthanum plus 3 for this particular question 37 that uh, answer a is correct uh, so answer is what uh, a Coming to question number 38. Question number 38. Cerium 58 is an important member of the lanthanoids. Which of the following statements about cerium is incorrect? Now, option A is a common oxygen state of cerium is plus 3 and plus 4. Yes, cerium exhibits plus 3 and plus 4 commonly. 
we agree plus 4 is more stable, but both the oxidation states exhibited by cerium plus cerium metal. Coming to option B, cerium plus 4 acts as oxidizing agent. Yes, cerium plus 4 acts as oxidizing agent because cerium plus 4 is actually tendency to take electron, therefore, it is acts as what oxidizing agent because in compared to plus 4 oxygen state, often it is exhibiting plus 3 also, therefore, it is having the tendency to take electron. Yes, acts as oxidizing agent. Coming to options C, the plus 4 oxygen state of cerium is not known in solution. Remember, cerium plus 4 is only stable in the solid state. Whenever cerium plus 4 salt put into aqueous solution, it is easily converts into plus 3. In aqueous solutions, cerium plus 3 is more stable. Therefore, cerium plus 4 oxygen state, cerium is not a known in solution yet taken. No, not known in solution. Whenever you take this particular cerium plus 4, you are putting into water, cerium plus 4 is actually given water, which of the following is the incorrect statement. This plus 4 oxygen state of cerium is not known in solution. Whenever a plus 4 salt put into a aqueous solution, plus 4 easily converts into plus 3. Therefore, plus 4 is not a well known in aqueous solution for cerium. So, here the option C is the correct so answer C. Coming to question number 39. Long thread contraction is caused due to A. Appreciable shielding on outer electrons by 4F electrons from the nuclear charge. Second option, the appreciable shielding on outer electrons by 5D electrons from the nuclear charge and the same effect to nuclear charge from cerium to lutetium and uh, the imperfect shielding of outer electrons by 4F electrons from the nuclear charge. Generally, long thread contraction we talk about. Two factors you have to take in the long thread contraction. One is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 you take, 6 shells. Lanthanides appear from 6th period, therefore 6 cells are written. What is the actual concept uh, about this particular lanthanide contraction? This is due to entry of differentiating electrons into 4F orbitals of antipenetimate shell, inner shell they are entering, first point. Second point, due to increase the nuclear charge by 14 units, see 14 electrons are entering, 14 units of nuclear charge increasing, first point. Second point, what is say, in addition to all these, 4F orbitals are poor shielders. Therefore, nuclear charge is directly working on this outermost orbital electrons we see. Because of this particular reason, because of this particular reason, this particular outermost orbital electrons are dragged towards the nucleus, attracted towards the nucleus. This is the reason for long thread contraction. So, coming to this particular option D, the imperfect shielding of outer electrons by 4F electrons from the nuclear charge. This is the correct option. This 4F orbitals are poor shielders. Therefore, outer orbital electrons are dragged or attracted towards the nucleus. Therefore, gradually atoms are contracting. So, here the answer D, we take the correct answer for question number 39. Answer is what D. Coming to question number 40. See, so, the actinides exhibit more number of oxidation states in general than the lanthanides, this is because. So, you see in comparison to lanthanides, actinides exhibit variable oxidation states. Option A is given as the 5F orbitals are more buried than the 4F orbitals. He is saying 4F, 5F orbitals are deeply seated. Coming to the second one, there is a similarity between 4F and 5F orbitals in the angular part of wave function. That is also not the correct answer for this. Coming to the actinides are more reactive than the lanthanides and D option is given as 5F orbitals extend further from the nucleus than the 4F orbitals. So, option D you can consider the 5F orbitals are actually extending more, 5F orbitals are extending more from the nucleus in comparison to 4F orbital. From the nucleus more extending from the nucleus, this is the reason for why this actinides are exhibiting variable oxygen states or you consider in comparison to this particular lanthanides, the energy difference between 5F and 6D, 5F and 6D you take. 
there is a difference between 5f and 6d orbital says less 6d orbitals say less therefore electrons easily from s orbitals d orbitals f orbitals can be easily involving in the reactions therefore electrons from s d and f all the three orbitals easily participating in the chemical reactions therefore the actinides are exhibiting more number of oxygen states in comparison to lanthanide in general we say actinides exhibit variable oxygen states but lanthanides cannot exhibit variable oxygen state this is the reason another difference between 5f and 6d you take or f orbit 5f orbitals are more extended from the nucleus than in comparison to 4f orbitals here option d is the correct Coming to option uh, question number forty one. Question number forty one. Larger number of oxygen states are exhibited by actinides than those by the lanthanides. The main reason being, A option A, four f orbitals are more diffuse than five f orbitals. B lesser energy difference between five f and six d between and uh, between four f and five d orbitals. More energy difference between five f and six d than between. 4f and 5d orbitals and uh, more reactive nature of actinides than lanthanides so answers are these are the answers what i discussed the energy difference bit come to the lanthanides and actinides in the case of actinides the energy difference between the 5f orbitals and 6d orbitals is less therefore electrons are easily involving from d orbitals and f orbitals in the case of actinides See, come to the option B there. Lesser energy difference between 5f and 6d. Just now I given here the energy difference between 5f and 6d orbitals in lanthanides is less. Therefore, electrons from s orbitals, d orbitals, and f orbital from three orbitals easily electrons are entering into chemical reactions. Therefore, this actinides are exhibiting more number of oxidation state. C. actinides are exhibiting easily variable oxygen states than lanthanides so here the answer b is the correct for this particular question number 41 coming to next question number 42 question number 42 in context with the transition elements which of the following statements is incorrect about transition element which of the following is incorrect is asking Coming to the question number that option number one, yeah, you take. In addition to normal oxygen states, the zero oxygen state is also shown by these elements in complexes. Yes, in most of the d-block elements, they are exhibiting different types of oxygen states, and also exhibiting zero oxygen state. You take simple example, nickel tetracarbonyl. No, carbonyl is neutral ligand, it will not. This in this particular word, nickel is zero. Yes, that is correct. Coming to option B. In the highest oxygen state, the transition metals show basic character and form cationic complexes. So, what is said in the highest oxygen number, transition metals are showing basic character. That is wrong. I given while discussion of this particular transition metals, a metal with different oxygen states whenever is given, choose the metal ion with lower oxygen state. That is more basic. I said the metal ion with higher oxygen state. That what I said yesterday. But what is given in this option B? In the highest oxygen state, the transition metal is showing basic character, not basic character. In the highest oxygen state, they are showing acidic character. So, option B is a uh, incorrect here. Coming to the option C also, in the highest oxygen states of first to five transition elements, all the 4s and 3d electrons are used for bonding. See, a d element, a d block element is actually exhibiting highest oxygen state. It is losing all the electrons from S orbital and D orbital. Consider manganese, for example. Manganese, you take. Manganese is exhibiting maximum oxygen state of plus one. How it is exhibiting? Yes, it is losing electrons from D five and S two. All the seven electrons it has to lose, then it is exhibiting. Correct only. The maximum oxygen state, all maximum oxygen state for a D block metal is only possible when it is losing electrons from the D orbital electrons and S orbital electrons. So option C is correct here. Coming to the option 4 once the d5 configuration exceeded the tendency to involve all the 3d electrons in bonding decreases while d5 electronic configuration is exceeded then first off and second off you take the nuclear charge will be gradually increasing therefore after d5 configuration the nuclear attraction over the 
d dot electrons increases therefore losing of electrons whenever d5 electronic config exceeding d6 d7 d8 like that they cannot easily lose the electrons as they are losing electrons up to d5 configuration therefore here option b so highest oxygen state of the transition metal show basic character that is now they are showing acidic character so here answer b is the character